have you ever thought about what it takes for a bird to fly? It turns out that the elements of flight are quite complex. It's almost magical how all the pieces come together to orchestrate this impressive act. Like physics and math and mechanics. But to even scratch the surface of understanding this, we have to study anatomy. Birds, like this Galapagos ruddy turnstone, have fascinating skeletal adaptations that allow them to soar through the air. But there are some birds that can't fly. Meet the flightless cormorant. Of the 19 cormorant species, this is the only one that is flightless. They're found exclusively on the Galapagos Islands. This is where they mysteriously lost their flying ability. Looking at their bone structure gives us insight into why they can't fly. One noticeable distinction is found in their wing size. The wings of flightless cormorants are on average 25 centimeters long, while the other cormorant species can have wings up to 100 centimeters. The radius and ulna are the two bones that are the most dramatically reduced compared to those that are able to fly. Birds have a limit for how much body weight a wing is able to support and still maintain flight. This limit is exceeded in flightless cormorants, not only because of their short wings, but because of their weight. They are the heaviest of all the species, and their wings would need to be about three times longer to be effective for flying. Another striking variation is found on the sternum of the flightless cormorant. Observe the large keel that a flying species of cormorant has protruding from their sternum. This structure is large in just about every flying bird, and it provides a substantial anchor point for the major flight muscles. The pectoral muscles are the largest of the flight muscles that attach here, just like the pectoral muscles of humans help to pull the arm in towards the chest. The pectoral muscles provide a strong downward flapping motion in birds. Like many flightless birds, the keel of a flightless cormorant is practically non-existent. This leaves little support for the major flight muscles. This means they can't flap their wings quite as strongly. But they can swim and dive. Their strong legs, webbed feet, and dense, heavy bones allow them to make deep dives up to 80 meters. Where they harvest eels and octopus from the ocean floor. Their long and flexible necks and thick beaks allow them to spear their prey from inside narrow spaces in reefs and between rocks. apparent that flightlessness isn't the end of the story for these birds. Their disability made space for incredible adaptations that would otherwise not have emerged. The flightless cormorant shows us that even though seeing birds venture through the air is indeed incredible, finding birds under the sea can be just as astounding. <laughs>